Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Welcome back. I hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, today I want to uh, revisit the Excision Bio EBT 101 progress. There are two reasons for this focus. First, this is the most extensive gene edit ever attempted to the best of my knowledge. Second, if they succeed, that would change my current understanding that edits more than three genes are difficult to make and are not reliable. And I'll also request that while watching this video, please consider pressing the like button and also please consider subscribing if you have not done so. This would mean a lot to me. I always put chapter index in the description, but since we have less than 1000 uh, subscribers, I believe you may not see the marking, but you can always look into the description and jump directly to the appropriate chapter that you want to watch so that you can avoid things that you don't want to watch. That said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. In mid-September, Excision Bio became the first ever CRISPR-based therapy for HIV to be ind enabled by the FDA. Excision Bio got authorization to initiate clinical trials for EBT-101 therapy to cure HIV. HIV is a RNA virus which on infecting a person converts itself into a double-stranded DNA and integrates with the host genome. The double-stranded DNA that integrates with the host genome is referred to as proviral RNA. The task of EBT-101 is to excise the proviral RNA from the host genome. The good news is that previous tests on transgen uh, transgenic mice by the lab of Kamal Khalili have proved successful in removing proviral DNA from multiple cell lines as well as genomes of transgenic mice. After that, the team worked on rhesus macaw monkey and infected them with a related simian uh, equivalent virus called simian immunodeficiency virus, SIV, uh, using single systemic treatment to remove uh, proviral DNA chunks from the genomes of blood cells and other tissues known to be viral reservoirs. And uh, it, it has proved that, the, the team has proved that uh, they were successful in removing HIV from simians as well. The reason I'm mentioning this is to emphasize how important EBT-101 is and how serious of an attempt this is to defeat HIV virus. The first uh, dosing has already been done with the idea that with antiretroviral treatment in progress, the virus numbers in the subject would be smaller and the therapy should be able to search and destroy the virus in all the viral reservoirs. So it is anticipated that when the antiretroviral therapy is stopped 12 weeks after dosing, the viral count should not appear. If that happens, then the patients will be tested at time intervals to confirm that the cure was once and done and there was no more residual HIV virus in the subject. And that would indicate success of this trial. The first patient was dosed on June 2022 and at that time we were told that the patient would be taken off their retroviral, antiretroviral therapy 12 weeks after dosing. We are now in the time period when we should expect to hear some updates from Excision. Earlier this month, Excision announced that it will host a clinical expert webinar on HIV and the ongoing clinical trial evaluating the company's EBT-101 as a potential cure for the disease. The webinar will take place on November 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern times. And since I'm not a clinical expert, I will not be able to attend that. Uh, I would not even be eligible to attend that uh, webinar. I'm going to wait for experts that attend the uh, webinar to uh, publish their views and bring them to you. The reason I'm talking about this challenge is, is that the cost of the therapy is likely to be very high if this therapy succeeds. And one of the factors for such high cost is the challenges associated with the delivery mechanism for CRISPR treatments. Scientists have been working with various delivery approaches such as uh, adeno-associated virus and lentivirus and chemical methods such as uh, liquid nanoparticles and physical methods such as microinjection. And each method has its advantages and disadvantages. The EBT-101 therapy uses the adeno-associated associated virus delivery method. Today, as I hope that the EBT-101 succeeds, I would like to talk more about the five hurdles in using AAV uh, to deliver a gene therapy payload. I have put a link to the article that I've used as reference. It's an article from Mark White in genengnews.com, which is my source, and you can always check it out for your own reference. Adeno-associated virus or AAVs have been found to be an extremely versatile vehicle for transporting healthy gene copies into patient cells. However, AAVs have to be produced in bulk. And as with all production uh, in bulk, quality control is the key. 
the steps taken to extract and purify AAV vectors are not yet perfect. This fundamental factor can cause problems right from discovery stage all the way to clinical, clinical trials and post-production. At a high level, the top five challenges uh, can be summarized by saying that many of the quality issues associated with AAV development stem from the fact that AAVs are produced in live cells in cell culture. To extract the viruses, the host production cells must be lysed, which introduces several challenges. First, this process often fails to yield sufficient viral titers, especially for AAVs. Second, the extract might contain residual host cell components such as protein, nucleic acids, bacteria, and other viruses, as well as proteins from the cell culture media that were derived from serum and animals. Finally, some of the AAV caspids may not contain the intended sequence, and they may be empty as well, or they may contain mispackaged host cells DNA. All these, process, uh, all these poses risk to the patients that are being given the uh, AAVs. So as per Mark White, uh, the, these are the top five challenges that the industry is working on right now. And uh, I'm going to dive into uh, more details. Uh, so let us talk about uh, the first one. The first one is the dearth of vectors. A gene therapy is effective only if the vectors are present in sufficient concentration in the dose. If the dose is too low, the treatment will not work. Unfortunately, the standard upstream bioprocessing approach used to grow these vectors yields very low concentrations. To reach an effective dose in a reasonable volume, the batch needs to be concentrated between 100 to 10,000 times. Mark adds that most commercial concentration devices are not built to concentrate AAV vectors into such small volumes. Additionally, by concentrating the vectors, the manufacturer is also concentrating any host cell contaminants that remain in the batch. Consequently, AAV developers must test the batches for vector concentration as well as for presence of impurities to ensure that the batches are safe and effective. Second, empty capsid. Empty AAV capsids are useless and need to be weeded out from the batch. Mark says that sometimes up to 90% of the capsids in a batch could be empty thus reducing the overall vector concentration. In order to compensate, one would have to increase the volume of the dose, but that can make it challenging to deliver therapies to smaller spaces in the body, such as the brain or spinal cord, in order to generate effective dose in practical volumes. Therefore, uh, AAV developers must monitor and minimize empty capsids. The third hurdle is the persistence of oncogenic host cell DNA. The cells in which the vectors are grown also contain impurities that could make their way to a final batch and into patients. One such molecule is oncogenic DNA, which, in common, which is common in manufacturing cell lines. Oncogenic DNAs can cause tumors or are related to tumor formation. To address this uh, issue, AAV developers must reduce uh, DNA as much as possible. It's nearly impossible to remove these genetic sequences if they have been mispackaged in the AAV vector as the caspid shields the DNA from nucleases. AAV developers need to uh, test the presence of oncogenes in their therapeutic batches and then also perform specific tests to determine if their vectors are likely to be oncogenic. The fourth hurdle is the immune system provoking genes. The caspid protein itself can elicit a response that could ultimately prevent the vector from infecting the patient cells and reduce the effectiveness of treatment. Many patients' uh, immune systems may have been exposed to AAVs before, potentially priming them to mount a stronger adaptive immune uh, response to the treatment. So that's an hurdle that needs to be crossed. And uh, the fifth hurdle is the contamination by mycoplasmas. Mycoplasmas pose a challenge because they are very small. Hence, they are uh, difficult to detect via standard light microscopy. They are gram-negative and resistant to, uh, resistant to the antibiotics used for cell line maintenance. Manufacturers, therefore, may need to use an alternative method, such as traditional cell, cell culture method to detect mycoplasma-contaminated batches so they can be removed from production. On my part, I'll be reaching out to Mark White and see if we can get 20 minutes from him to talk about these challenges and what he thinks is the outlook going forward. But friends, because we are less than uh, 1,000 uh, subscribers, uh, it's very difficult for me to appear credible to uh, such knowledgeable sources uh, who are very busy with their own work and they're at high levels within their organizations. Uh, so uh, I would uh, request you guys to circulate this video and encourage some of your friends who are interested in uh, genomics to subscribe to our channel so that we can boost our 
subscriber count and I would be able to bring uh, these kind of um, uh, experts uh, to talk to us uh, in interviews and address some of our questions. So I'll keep you updated on my progress with getting uh, Mark to give us an interview. Uh, and if, ha if that happens, I'll record an interview, bring it to you. So with that, I would bring this video to an end. Uh, and um, uh, I would request once again that uh, if you like this video, please press a like out there. And if you're not yet subscribed, please subscribe and help me reach the thousand mark so that we can start getting uh, experts to come in and um, give us some interviews. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.